Chairman Watkins. I'll um, got a presentation as well and uh, a handout that helps I follow that. It's a two-pager. Um, I'll pass that out and get working here on the presentation. analysis, and I know there's been some disagreement between their analysis and our analysis, 
But I want to emphasize one very important point where the staff of the State Corporation Commission and the Southern Environmental Law Center agree, and that is that Virginia is already well on its way, most of the way there, to meeting our compliance targets under the Clean Power Plan, just using what we have already done, the decisions that utilities have already made, the plans on coal retirements, on new gas plants, all that already gets us a lot of the way there. I was talking with Mr. Uh, Walker uh, last week about this. The status analysis, I believe, and he, of course, can, can confirm this, is 73% of the way there. That take those existing decisions, we've already achieved, if we do nothing else, 73% of the goal under the staff's analysis. As the, excuse me, SCLC's analysis is that we are 79%, almost 80% of the way there, if we do nothing else. If the EPA rule goes away tomorrow, that 79% already happens. That is critical uh, to understanding how achievable this rule is. Let me show you, I want to walk you through how we get to our 79%. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Sorry. A question, please. Uh, question, please do that. Uh, yeah, that delegate's rule. Uh, when you say that you don't something, I want to know, please go any further. Are you this small part to show the degree or that part of part? Well, on the, on the specifics of, in terms of how far along we are towards meeting the goal, I believe the staff says we're 73%, staff and state corporation commission. We say we're 79%. So essentially, it's, it's that delta of just 6%. We say there's 21% way to go. They say there's 27% of the way to go. But it's, it's actually not that far apart. Thank you. With that, let me walk through how we get to our 79%. I get the right clicker here. All right, so the first building block, and you've heard a little bit from Mr. Munyon and from Mr. Taylor about the building blocks that EPA has under this Clean Power Plan. The first building block is reductions in pollution from existing coal fired power plants. And right now, Virginia has already, for years, planned to retire coal fired units at, Ches uh, at Chesapeake at Yorktown, um, those are both in the Dominion Fleet and then in the Appalachian Power Fleet, Glenlyn and Clinch River. Those retirements are already set to happen and the reductions from those retirements get us 9% of the way towards the target. By the way, that gets us farther along the target than EPA's assumption about the 6% uh, improvements on heat rate efficiency. So 9%, EPA rule goes away, these retirements happen anyway, we get that 9% reduction. The second big building block for EPA, and this is obviously a huge building block here in Virginia, is on natural gas. We have already approved by the State Corporation Commission and under construction new major gas plants in Warren County and Brunswick County. Those plants count towards meeting this goal. In addition, we've modeled, and this is EPA's assumption in the rule, which is why we modeled it, um, increasing the combined cycle natural gas units up to 70% capacity factor. And in fact, that's something that utilities are already doing in Virginia. Dominion's testified in the North Carolina Utilities Commission that their new Bear Garden combined cycle gas plant is already averaging 70%. That's also the average statewide for combined cycle uh, units is at roughly 71%. So we're already there. We think that's a safe assumption to make. If you count that 70% capacity factor and the new gas, Using EPA's methodology and EPA's assumptions, you get to 56% of the goal, just like that, without having to do anything additional. All right, let's take a look at the third building block. Third building block for EPA is renewable energy, solar, wind, and of course, preserving what EPA calls the at-risk portion of the nuclear fleet. That's the portion of the nuclear fleet that EPA is saying is at risk for being retired. And if the state instead chooses to keep that online, that at-risk portion online, you get that credit. If you count the at-risk portion and the existing renewables that we've already got in Virginia, that gets you another 13% of the way there. The last building block for EPA is energy efficiency. And as you can see here, we've got a lot of work to do. Using the existing energy efficiency programs 
that Dominion Virginia Power has already implemented, that have been approved by the State Corporation Commission, that gets us 1% of the way closer towards the goal. Now that's a very conservative analysis because we're just looking at programs that have already been approved, that are already have hit the, um, hit the pavement, so to speak, and are still will be delivering uh, savings by 2029. Dominion and Appalachian Power, as you know, have pending right now before the State Corporation Commission additional energy efficiency programs. So the 1% number is conservative because it's excluding all of those existing, all, I'm sorry, it's excluding all of those pending efficiency programs. In any event, the big takeaway here is that the remaining piece of the pie is 21% by our analysis. If the EPA, if EPA changes, its mind, changes its mind and repeals this rule, that 79% already happens. The coal retirements, the new gas, all of that already happens. It's built into the system. We've, we're a long way there without having to do pretty much anything. The debate, the entire debate about this rule is focused on that 21%, or you use the staff's numbers, the 27%. And the difference between the staff's analysis and our analysis, there are a few tweaks. I believe the staff uh, focused on Dominion. Uh, in Dominion's fleet, we looked at both Dominion and Appalachian Power um, and pulled that all together. Uh, we also assumed the 70% capacity factor. I don't believe staff assumed that uh, increased to 70%. But nonetheless, the whole debate here is on the 21 to 27% and how you get there. Mr. Chairman, last question? Well, I would be. Um, are you, are you using that 2012 baseline number that we heard about earlier when you project that we're already 79% there? That's correct, Doug. We're using the, uh, the EPA baseline of 2012. So, Mr. Chairman, one follow-up question. Have you done an analysis about what would have happened if that baseline number was shifted to either an average of three or five years around the same time or could be a different year back in time? So it seemed, if, if the math's right, I don't question the math, if we could be almost 100% of the way to compliance if the baseline were not, didn't happen to be the year where we had the 38% reduction or whatever that number was. Well, EPA, I believe, picked 2012 because that was the most recent year for which they had a, a complete set of data. Uh, if you pick 20, 2005, you're, pick, you're sort of cherry picking a very high emission year, um, obviously before the economic uh, crisis, so when emissions were at, at their highest level. But we, um, you know, if you, let's say, do a three-year average, which the EPA has done on other rules, you know, 2010, 2011, 2012, we'd have uh, no objection to doing that. So, Mr. Chairman, I guess what my question, one, I, I, I appreciate your position that you did, don't object to that averaging because that obviously changed the economics for some. So what my question is, is have you all done an analysis about how far towards compliance, your 79, that 21 we're left talking about, how much that 21 shrinks if you use a 10, 11, 12 average versus just picking the one super low year? Um, we, at this point, have just done an analysis of the EPA's proposed rule, so we haven't done it outside of the 2012 year. Um, turning back to sort of how we get that remaining 21. Mr. Chair, I have a question. Thank you. Um, in your third bullet, you listed that um, you're preserving 6% of your at-risk nuclear power. What are you referring to when you say 6% of our at-risk? That, that's based off of EPA's assumption that 6% um, of the nuclear fleet nationwide would be at-risk for being retired and taken offline by 2030. And so EPA is saying, we'll give you credit for investing to keep that percentage of the fleet online, not letting it retire over the course of this rule. So that's where that 6% value comes from. It's EPA's assumption. Mr. Well, Chairman. Sure. Senator Saswell. You, I assume you were sitting there when I asked the gentleman before you, <coughs> excuse me, um, if the example I gave, if Dominion were to decide to go all nuclear <coughs> and could by 2030 and shut down everything else, what is the logic behind telling you can't do that? 